Los Angeles, California, the Lemley Royal Theater. It's opening night, the movie right up Hollywood's alley. Two obsessed lovers, a grisly murder, sex, and betrayal. My parents died because Jens and I were obsessed with each other. But it turns out in the genre of you can't make this up, Hollywood didn't. The movie, Killing for Love, is actually a documentary in theaters now. A deep dive into the real life case of Yen Suring, behind bars for nearly 32 years for a brutal crime he says he didn't commit. It's a natural human emotion to want somebody to blame. Yen's multi decade crusade for freedom has now attracted a dream team of A list supporters. I think that that's screen legend Martin Sheen leading the QA at that LA screening. He could not possibly have been at the scene. There's also music mogul Jason Flom, the man responsible for launching Katy Perry's career. Are you ready for a perfect job? And a founding board member of the Innocence Project. He is somebody who could have and should have known better, and he was blinded by love. Even German Chancellor Angela Merkel has advocated for Jens's release, but his two strongest advocates, ironically, aren't high-profile celebrities or hotshot defense attorneys. They're police officers. As far as him physically killing these people, mm -hmm. no, I don't think he did. One is an investigator who originally worked on the case. Show me. The other, a current sheriff, now reinvestigating it. If you break it down and look at what the evidence truly is, I don't feel like it would support a conviction if he was tried today. Jens's story begins in 1984 at the University of Virginia. He's 18 years old, the son of a German diplomat, a freshman and a Jefferson scholar with a full scholarship to UVA. We were in the same Eccles Scholars program. The Eccles Scholars program pulls the top 6% of each entering class. Amy Lemley wrote an extensive investigative magazine article about the case. What was Jens like? He had the physique more of a boy than a man, you know, kind of baby fat. He had big, thick glasses that covered about half of his face. They said that most people really couldn't stand to be in a conversation with them because he just loved to argue. He was intellectually arrogant? I would say so. He was also, by his own admission, sexually inexperienced. Sexually, not only inexperienced, but, you know, a virgin, right? Mm -hmm. And he meets a girl, Elizabeth Hasem, who is one of the hottest girls on campus. She was apparently very bright as well, um, came from a very good family, and he falls head over heels in love with her. Elizabeth is two years older than Jens. Her father, Derek Hasem, was a Canadian steel mogul, and her mother, Nancy, the goddaughter of Lady Astor, a wealthy aristocrat and the first woman to take a seat in the British Parliament. But this power family seemed to have no power over their wild child daughter. Elizabeth ran away from boarding school in England and spent five months in Europe using drugs. Nevertheless, she presented well to her classmates at UVA. She had this great shock of blonde hair hanging down, and she was the opposite of who you think might end up with Jan Suring. People must have been a bit taken aback by her selection of him. Yes, very few people understood what was going on between those two. One thing apparently going on between the virginal freshman and his unlikely alluring companion was revealed in a series of X-rated letters they exchanged over several months. When you see and you read those love letters, you can sort of feel that there was a lot of, you know, sexual tension. These are just some of the ones we can actually read on television. I love you. Je t'aime. I love you selfishly, and I love you with How you pain. feel about a couple drinks back at my place. I want to be with you, around you, through you. But only months into their relationship, in March 1985, tragedy strikes. Derek W.R. Hasem and his wife Nancy were stabbed to death in their home. Elizabeth's parents are found brutally murdered inside their rural retirement home in Boonesboro, Virginia. 
It sort of sits on the border right there, Lynchburg and Bedford County. Just a very nice, quiet, wealthy community. The bodies were only discovered this afternoon at their home on Holcomb Rock Road. It was a very shocking crime. I've never seen anything, anything like that before. Then rookie investigator Ricky Gardner is one of the first to arrive on the scene. This is your first real homicide, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Early we were able to determine that this was not a, a burglary. Nothing appears to be missing. There is even Nancy Hasem's purse with money still in it. The Hasem's must have let whomever um, did this to them into the house because there was no sign of forced entry. But I'd never seen any human being that had been injured by another human being in that, in that fashion. Overkill? Overkill. It was up close and personal. To me, it was like a slaughterhouse. Chuck Reed was a Bedford County investigator in 1985 and worked the case with Gardner for a year before leaving the sheriff's office. He took me inside the crime scene. You opened the door when you first came here. The first thing I saw was Derek Hasem's body was lying here with his head up against, basically up against the corner of this up fireplace this here. this corner here? Yes. Derek Hasem had been stabbed 36 times, Nancy, six. Her body was found in the kitchen. Both were stabbed in the heart, both nearly decapitated. If you step over and come in, this area right here is where all the blood was. Now where? the table just around in this area where we smeared around in this area. And the first thing in your mind was? What kind of gang came in here and did this? There was concern because of the smearing blood initially that there was some sort of cult involved. Rumors of witchcraft and voodoo fueled curiosity and the demand for answers. Whodunit theories are rampant. Word that Derek Hasem upset workers in the steel business fuels rumors of a mafia-style hit. But a clue in a rental car agreement is about to change the direction of the case. You saw that and you thought... That's when we get to thinking, well, wait a minute. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.